Welcome, one and all mind, to Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon, a world that is entirely dominated by corporations, definitely real people, the Catholic Church, and mercenaries. We just so happen to be one of those mercenaries who goes by the name John Core. OC, do not steal. We have played too much League of Legends, and now our brain has been reduced to the consistency of a 7-Eleven slushie. In order to fix this, we embark on a journey with our, I mean, boss, in order to find the last stash of the blood of Christ, as it is very valuable and can help us get a surgery to fix our melted cerebral cortex. Along the way, we will encounter friends, enemies, people who shouldn't be allowed within 100 miles of civilization, James Bond villain, the fucking Gillette Razor, and Canadians. We begin our journey by doing our best Master Chief impression, and right after falling a tremendous height and surely experiencing several Gs of force, we do it again. This is where we meet the Rubicon Liberation Front, the people who already live here. I don't think they like us being here, but let's help them see the error of their ways. Do not worry about the large helicopter flying overhead, surely it will not notice us. But in order for us to gain any form of recognition, we must permanently borrow someone's ID. Unfortunately, Monkey Gordo is already a taken gamer tag. After stumbling upon the last one, it works, and the name seems to be... Hey there, bud, I'm gonna politely ask you to get off my planet, eh? No. Then I guess it's time for a stern warning, huh? Dispatching this foe is harder than it may seem initially, as our starting mech is very limited in its abilities, and this motherfucker keeps flying out of bounds. Just get back here, you fucking bi- This is the first major hurdle in a From Software title, so naturally game journalists could not handle it. It requires patience, using your cover, decent energy management, but the beast finally goes down. So about that name picked up. It's Raven. Hmm. Gee, I wonder what significance that has. It is here we get introduced to the very in-depth customization in the garage, allowing us to change our parts, weapons, and live out our true Bikini Bottom fantasies. After getting a cool new paint job, we are introduced to Allmind, who will give us training missions and eventually allow us into the arena for cool and good upgrades. But before that, we must now begin our journey by accepting missions from the various factions on Rubicon. You will work for and against all of them, all the time, because we are purely financially motivated. Our first two missions are quite simple. Pop up some goofy uh, recon squads and liberate a small town from the oppressive rule of the big artillery guns that are definitely there to hurt them and not protect them from mercenaries who only seek to gain from war and destruction. Uh, hey, what's up, dweeb? You wanna go bully a kid for their lunch money? Yes. I appreciate the enthusiasm. Leave nothing. This fight is not very hard. They call him a tester pilot because he is testing new features inside armored cores. The feature he is supposed to test is the pilot ejection seat. His did not work. Now we must murder helpless civilians and destroy their fragile helicopters which apparently have relief supplies, but it doesn't make any sense because we are the relief. Now this is where we encounter a mildly challenging enemy, the Tetra Dog MT. He's got that dog in him. I won't lie to you, it might not look that bad, but all this footage is from my 7th playthrough. My first time around it kicked my ass for 30 minutes. But this is present me and I am gooder at game than past me. What the hell do you want? I hear you're going on a funny little field trip along the Italian countryside. Can I send my war criminal, I mean mercenary, to tag along? Sure thing, Walter. We got ourselves a deal. Oh, that was easy. Are you not upset about the tester pilot? I'm serious. Now we must blow up the dam, because it stands for the Industrial Revolution's consequences on nature and society. In Michigan's own words, make those sacks of shit beg for mercy. Now what's important to understand is that Michigan is one of the best characters in the game, and no one can parody him to make it better. The Pope has sent one of his right-hand men, Minecraft Steve, in order to stop us from attacking the dam. Unfortunately for him, his AC is built like Wally and cannot keep up with the three of us at once. Get the fuck away from my dam, it is all I have left. No. So now, Arch's Fortnite Battle Bus wants us to help the Liberation Front with their rather large dog. Luckily for them, I am a war veteran and an 
Now, this large beast has a funny blue laser piss attack that hurts a lot, but I choose to beeline it to the left and it did not get a chance to hit me. After making the dog stand still so we can diagnose the problem, it tries to make us back off, but we're only trying to help. Now, this is only instinct for animals, so we have to sedate him so we can administer the cure for his problem. Oh, no, wait, those are chocolate missiles. After proving that we are truly an animal rights activist, Walter decides to try to get us some other friends, but they are nowhere near as cool as Michigan and Lip Balm. So Arkham Knight Sus wants to see how well we perform. The ladies say I am very fast. After acquiring new drip, we are tasked with assaulting the wall. Not just any wall, but the wall. It's not too bad to deal with as long as you don't get hit. And here we find another Tetris dog, but it is no match for my M&M missiles. We sneak into the wall, but not the way they want because I am not a sheep and I have my own free will, and then we resupply when Walter tells us to because we are a sheep and have no free will. to knock this sucker out you better get moving dickhead remember how i said we were attacking the wall yeah i was talking about this guy right here we climbed the wall to fight the wall to get down from the wall to then continue emotionally walling ourselves off from everyone else the gimmick here is that you can only damage this boss from the back and attacking from the front does no damage at all rusty will distract him most of the time leaving the back open for a smack however about halfway through the fight hey dickhead i gotta go Oh, I smell the pizza and it's cooking too fast. I gotta get it out of the oven before it burns. What is a pizza? Gabagoo, smell you later, dickhead. Shit. Finishing the fight really isn't that hard as long as you're moving. Even on my very first playthrough, it took me maybe two tries. Rusty calls us afterwards to tell us how badass we are and also that his company really cares about us. Hey, what's up, moron? You didn't do half bad fighting that putz. Maybe we can team up again sometime. By the way, the pizza thing was a lie. My boss wanted to sacrifice you. It was a really funny joke, honestly. You should have been there. What the fuck is a pizza? Now it is arena time. This is where we get those cool and good upgrades I was talking about earlier, but we need to harness our inner cyberbully as a practice run before we bully them in the real world. You end up fighting every single person you come across in the arena at some point in the story. These fights aren't too bad, unless you're a games journalist. Put on your detective hats, folks. We've got a mystery to solve. The Pope has already forgiven us for our sins at the wall, and he wants our help. A weapon manufacturer's plant they buy from has gone dark, and they want us to find out why. Facility's haunted. This shit is Luigi's mansion, and we are Luigi. Oh my god. There it is. The blood of Christ. If I can just get a hold of... What? Oh my god, it's Indiana Jones! Mr. Ford, tell me, do you think you'll ever be able to play Han Solo in Star Wars again? I think I upset him. I'm so sorry, Mr. Ford, I didn't mean it. 621, my friend, who is definitely real, has a request for us to go to this watch point and blow it up. What? You don't know then they go to a different school. So we arrive at the watch point in order to do the thing that we're doing here. What's the thing? Who cares? Time for murder. So you can actually avoid getting damage from these turrets by simply going around them. I read The Art of War by Sun Tzu, trust me. There it is, the watch point. All we have to do is go into- who the fuck is that? What's up, fucker? This is my watch point. Can I go in? Absolutely fucking not. You are not allowed in here because this is mine and mine alone and I do not like sharing. I- so the fight with this fine gentleman here gave me more trouble than I want to admit. On my very first run, I beat it in two tries, and he has never given me any shit in any of my playthroughs afterwards, except for this one, apparently. I died three times trying to do the Asmongold method, which is just brute forcing it until success happens. So we head back to the workshop, acquire some bitchin' new drip, and I beat him first try. 
After getting past that dickhead, we get to blow the thing up, and as a reward, we are given our very own schizophrenic VTuber girlfriend. I think I'm gonna let Stream Me handle this little bit. Have we made contact? Shit, I wish. I am Air, a Rubicalian. I know. Who the hell am I? What is that? I don't think he likes me being here. This fight is known as the Great Filter amongst players due to this being the real first roadblock of the game. His shield has to be broken before we could do any meaningful damage to him. His name is Baltaeus, and his quirk is fuck ton of missiles. Seriously, this man has enough firepower to rival an entire third world nation. I bet certain people are jealous of him. Now, you could take the pulse guns and melt his shield that way, but slamming your head into the wall until you beat him with conventional weaponry is much more funny. Speaking of funny, this is a From Software game, so you will partake in the enjoyment of this being a two-phase boss. He gets even more missiles, some which hurt a lot more than you'd expect, and he is best friends with Prometheus because he too stole fire from Olympus. It's pretty easy to dodge, but if it does hit you, it will hurt. Surely we won't have to deal with that guy ever again. <laughs> 